Okay, welcome to a very rare Animals at Home video. If you're new to the channel, my name is Dylan. If you are a regular subscriber or listener, thank you for being here and thank you for your support. Now, for those who are new, this channel is mainly used to post a video version of my podcast. That's the Animals at Home podcast. If you haven't had a chance to listen to that yet, please go do it. If you are a reptile lover, keeper, someone that eventually wants to keep or someone who already is keeping, you will gain a ton of knowledge and value from the podcast. And that's not because you'll be listening to me, but it's because you'd be listening to the people who I have on, my guests, who are some of the most incredible, well-rounded, intelligent reptile keepers, uh, biologists, zookeepers, really the list goes on as far as who I have on the podcast and the listeners who are, you know, the regular listeners will agree that it really is a value to your reptile care and it's, it's really helped me a lot and it will help you too. So definitely go check it out if you haven't checked it out already. Now, if you are someone who's been around for a while, you know that I moved about 11 months ago. Somehow it's been 11 months. And then shortly after that, we had my wife and I had a baby. So my life has been incredibly busy and I've really been putting all my time and energy into making sure the podcast quality goes up and uh, I'm continuing to produce content as far as that goes. But what's happened is because I have so much time and energy focused on the podcast, I've actually stagnated in this room as far as my reptile care. And I've been very aware of that. You know. This is kind of a, con a, a topic for another day, but one of the things that I found very amazing when I had the baby was you don't have the context for how big of a life change something like that can be. And it makes me worried about people who have huge collections before they do some of those major life changes. Um, maybe like starting a career or having a baby or getting married, all those different things that can impact your time and your energy that you don't really have a concept for before they happen. Now, I. I don't want to go down this path too far, but I'll tell you right now that I was incredibly grateful that I only had six reptiles during that first two or three months when I had when we had the baby because I was just so busy and so tired and this room became neglected in a way that didn't really impact the health or anything of the animals, but I wasn't attempting to make any major wholesale changes. I wasn't trying to make any improvements down here because I just had enough capacity to maintain things, make sure things were watered and fed and, and healthy, obviously, but nothing more could happen down here because I just didn't have the time. And now I have the time. I'm ready to make a big upgrade in this space. And part of the podcast's sort of message is make improvements, advance your husbandry, make changes that are positive for the animals when you can. Not everybody has thousands of dollars that they can spend every couple of months to make these big improvements, but when you do have some money set aside, maybe you have some savings that you've grown or you find some more time in your life, that's a great amount, that's a great point in time to make an improvement and that's what we're doing here today. So, Paul from Custom Reptile Habitats was kind enough to essentially send me enough enclosures to, st for those of you who, who don't know, this this room is my podcast studio as well as my animal room, as well as my reptile room. So Paul has agreed to actually deck out the entire studio with custom reptile habitats enclosures, which I'm super excited about. And I knew this was coming, which is one of the reasons why I sort of had to, I, I paused on some of the enclosure. I, I didn't want to make new enclosures or anything because I knew that these were coming. And now that they're here, we're going to set them up. And this is going to be a lot more fun because I'll get you guys involved. So first today, I'm just really gonna talk about Custom Reptile Habitats as well as Paul, and uh, we're gonna set up a couple of these enclosures. This is one of them. This is a, a six foot enclosure by three feet tall by two feet wide. I have two more of these that I have to set up, so we'll at least set up one on camera. I probably don't need to set up both on camera because it's kind of repetitive. And then I'm just gonna lay up, show you guys what I want this room to look like. There's still two enclosures that I don't have yet, so those will eventually come. But I wanna show you how this room is gonna lay out, and, and then, we will probably next video finish laying it out as well as adding the animals to the enclosures in temporary setups. Now, I don't mean the animals are gonna be temporarily in those setups, I mean the setup in themselves will be temporary because I'll, I'll basically just set the enclosures up in a very simplistic way, not simplistic, but you know, add some basic enrichment, uh, some climbing branches and hides and water and whatnot, get them in the new enclosures, and then we'll do dedicated videos afterwards for setting up my boa enclosure my rainbow bowl enclosure, my carpet python enclosure. Those will be separate videos that I actually go full tilt, setting up the lighting, the heating, all the enrichment, replicating the natural environment as best as we can. And I'll probably use some input from you guys as well. So, and, and the reason I'm doing that is because I have to get rid of the old enclosures. I can't have the new enclosures and the old enclosures in this basement because there's just not enough room. So I need to get the animals in the new enclosures, but I also want to spend proper amount of time dedicated to making the new enclosures properly, you know, establishing them in a way that I'm very proud of. And that's what we're going to be doing. So for those of you who are unaware, I have uh, 
Every animal in this room except for my day gecko is getting an upgrade. My day gecko just had an upgrade last summer, so she's all set. But my crested gecko, my Brazilian rainbow boa, my two uh, Colombian boas, and my jungle carpet python will be receiving major upgrades. Basically, everybody is getting a double in space, it's sort of doubling the volume that they currently have. And like I said, we'll go through and we'll set each of those enclosures up separately. So. Let's get to work. I think this is gonna be a lot of fun. I can't wait to have the studio finished. I can tell you right now, this basement is absolutely insane right now. Maybe I'll just do a quick walkthrough to show you how chaotic things are, and then we're gonna get down to business. So here's some flat packed enclosures that I still need to build. That's what we're gonna to do today. And then we have some universal rock stuff in the back. I have my old enclosures here. Absolute insane disaster over here. This is, a, for me, who's a relatively clean and orderly person, this is really painful for me to, for me to show you guys. But anyway, I, I'm wanting to have my computer desk in this corner here and my microphone and my camera that will be filming from this direction. And so you'll see me on the camera and then behind me you'll have uh, two six foot enclosures stacked on top of each other and then jutting out an L like this way in an L shape will have a six foot enclosure on top and then a four foot and a uh, two foot enclosure on top as well. So it'll be a really nice stack of all the animals. Here's one of the enclosures right now with some more universal rock stuff. I'll show you guys how we build that in a minute. And then I have this sort of fake artificial wall or wood wall that I'm going to deck out with some really cool paintings uh, or, or drawings or art of reptile related. Here's Adeline Robinson's work. Um, beautiful artist. She We had her on the podcast. Incredible artist. Check her out on Instagram if you haven't already. And we might as well take a quick look at some of the animals. Here's one of the boas. I can tell you right now, she's very much looking forward to a new enclosure. And the carpet python. He's actually starting to go into shed, I think. Can I see him down there? He's looking good. So, before I trip over everything. So, all these enclosures will be gone. I'll be putting them in storage or tearing these ones down. I might even just throw these ones out because they've done their time. And then we will have brand new enclosures in this entire area. So. I'm very much looking forward to doing this. This is gonna be a huge project for me. Actually, just assembling the enclosures is not that bad, but then going through them all with a fine tooth comb and actually setting them up properly is going to be a lot of work. I'm probably gonna cost me a lot of money too, buying new lighting and all, you know, substrates, but I could not be more grateful that Paul from Custom Reptile Habitat sent me these enclosures for free. So just so you know, they were sent to me for free. We're gonna be testing them out. I'll give you a review on them, let you know what I like about them, if there's anything I think that they could do better. Of course, we'll cover all that. I wanna show you this really cool material that they use for this enclosure uh, for all the enclosures and yeah let's just get to work so I just want to start off by showing you the product that we're using for the paneling of these enclosures now typically you're probably used to seeing the black PVC walls and floors that we normally see in herpetoculture now you can still get that off a of custom reptile habitats website but the material we're using here is called acre and you can upgrade any enclosure to use the acre product. I think if you were to get a six foot enclosure by two feet wide by two feet tall, I think it's only about an extra $125 to upgrade to acre. Now this product is made by a company called Modern Mill. It's produced in the United States and it's 100% sustainably sourced and essentially up cycles a waste material. So the, the waste material is rice hull. That's a, a waste that gets produced in the agriculture industry that typically just gets dumped out. Modern Mill uses the rice hull and creates a PVC composite. So it's essentially a PVC, but 40% of it is rice hull. That's why it behaves more like wood. So you can stain it with water-based stain. You can screw it. You can glue it using a PVC glue. As I said, it's 100% waterproof and rot-proof. And it also contains no glues or VOCs. So it's not a product that's going to gas off. So it is a really incredible product. And it's made in the U.S., which means it's giving jobs to people in, in America to produce this upcycled material. Again, no dust, no debris created at the facility. I'll, I'll link a podcast that talks about this product a little bit more in the description because it is quite fascinating. And when you first feel it, it almost feels like a cardboard, almost like cheap. At first, I was a little bit worried. I thought, how is it possible that this is not going to get degraded in, in water? But it doesn't because it is essentially a PVC. So I soaked it for an entire month a small piece and it came out exactly the same because it would be the same as soaking plastic. So it is an incredible product. I encourage you to go look more into it. I don't want to waste too much time talking about it here, but definitely look more into it if you're interested. So I stained the product using a water-based stain. You cannot use a solvent-based stain or an oil-based stain on, on Acre. So you have to use water-based or paint. You can use water-based paint as well. The stain I used was called Salmon. I think that is a Canadian product. So for once, maybe the Americans, you will not be able to find this product. Normally it's us Canadians that struggle finding the product that you guys use but any water-based stain or paint will work i did two coats 
I used a paintbrush and I just painted with the grain. That's the other cool thing about this product. It does have a bit of a grain in it. And I painted with the grain and two coats gave it this sort of nice kind of rich brown look, which I think suits the black framing that we're going to use very nicely. So it does look sharp once it's all together. The actual enclosures go together very easy. You just need a sort of a heavier rubber mallet and the square tubing, the frame, the aluminum frame just hammers itself together. And then you just slide the acre sheets into place. There's instructions. It's very simple to follow. Now, I only stained the sh sections that I knew would be visible. So the sides and the front, I didn't stain the back. And I also didn't stain the floor or the interior because the interior is going to be covered. So that did save me a lot of time as well. Now, I just wanted to take a minute to talk about custom reptile habitats and Paul. Now, eventually Paul will be on the podcast and we'll talk more about this, but Paul is somebody who is a hobbyist. He's also a businessman. So he's going about this business properly. He's, he's, he's passionate about herpetoculture and he knows how to make a business that thrives. And you, you really need those two things in order to be successful. You know, there's so many people that have a vision of wanting to make a change, but if you don't have the skill set or the tools to create a thriving business, then it becomes impossible. And Paul has that. He's a whole history of other businesses that he's had success in. And the amazing thing about Paul is that he reached out to me, I think, after I released episode number eight or nine. Literally, this was early on 2019, I think, only a couple of months into the podcast. And he he liked the show, he liked the message, and he wanted to sponsor the show and he wanted to help me out. And we've been, you know, friends since then. We've been talking back and forth we, we always knew that we'd have the, the set decked out for for the podcast and and like I said we will have him on the podcast to explain this further but I just want to emphasize the fact that he did not come to me because I had 10 million subscribers or 5 million subscribers and I have a huge audience he came to me when I probably had less than a thousand subscribers and he came to me because the message fit within the brand the brand of Custom Reptile Habitats is specifically designed because we are lacking proper enclosures on the market. The big companies in herpetoculture do not produce enclosures that are appropriate for the species that are commonly sold and commonly kept in the hobby. And that's what Paul was out there to to, to create, to, to fill that gap. And he's done an incredible job with that. And I cannot wait to have him on the podcast. But again, if Paul, if you're watching this, I want to thank you so much for supporting me over all these years and supporting me with this build. And I'm, I'm very excited to use the product. So once the enclosure is fully put together and you have the actual structure completed with all the acre sheets in place, the next thing you have to do is install these rubber seals that squeeze between the aluminum framing and the actual sheets of acre. So that does two things. One, it seals for moisture and it also just makes the enclosure way more structurally sound because it holds those sheets in place. So essentially, you just have to use one of those spline. I don't know what you call this tool. It's, a, it's, it's what you put spline in for a screen and you wedge that seal into place. Now, I struggled in some places. Sometimes it went in super easy. In some areas, I had a little bit of a challenge. So it's probably one of the most time consuming parts of the build, but it is necessary to make sure everything is structurally sound, as I said earlier. So one of my favorite parts about custom reptile habitat enclosures is you can order a spacer or a hood that sits on top of the enclosure. So if you're stacking enclosures, then you'd order a spacer. If you are just having a single enclosure, then you might want to add a hood on top. And those are designed, it's, it's sort of very reminiscent of the aquarium hobby. We see hoods in the aquarium hobby all the time that are purely designed to completely hide all that unsightly equipment that we need, all the, the lighting and the cables and, and, and everything that sort of draws away from, if, if you create a beautiful, well-planted enclosure or vivarium, the last thing you want is cords and chaos on the top that distract somebody from looking at the beauty you created. And the, the hoods are perfect for that. They completely hide everything and there's these nice sliding doors that give you access and it really polishes off the entire look very nicely. So one of the last things is gluing these large PVC panels onto the bottom of the enclosure. I should say siliconing, not gluing. That just eats up the gap that exists underneath the frame because the acre slides into the square frame. So that leaves sort of a quarter inch gap underneath. And just to eat up that space to make sure the entire enclosure is supported, we put these PVC panels down. So the final thing I needed to do for this build was install the universal rock backgrounds. But before doing that, I ran a bead of silicone on the floor seams as well as about eight inches up the walls. This is just something that custom reptile habitat sort of recommends if you're going to be keeping higher humidity species so i just wanted to you know give myself peace of mind make sure i wasn't going to have any water seep through those rubber seals that we installed earlier so the silicone just basically laid on top of those rubber seals and just made sure everything was nice and watertight and then i went ahead and installed the universal rock backgrounds that were also sent to me by custom reptile habitats super grateful for that these backgrounds do really make the enclosures look stunning they're a bit cumbersome to install when they're this large but 
all in all, they went in relatively easy and I'm very happy with the way they look. And the final thing for this video is just stacking the enclosures. The enclosures came with these small metal pins and the enclosures just sit on top and slide into place on those pins to make sure they can't slide around. And the hoods and the spacers also connect in the same fashion. Okay, wow, well, that was a lot more work than I was actually expecting it. Of course, the putting the enclosures together, I was expecting that to be you know a decent amount of work, but a lot of the work in here was moving furniture, moving the entire room around, getting rid of the old enclosures, carrying these exoterras around, you know, every, I did that all by myself. So it was very, very heavy. At one point, or, you know, a lot of work lifting heavy stuff. At one point, this basement was an absolute disaster, you know, so walking around all these different things. Um, but I'm very happy with the way things are turning out. You can see the two six foot enclosures behind me. They have the backgrounds installed. Everything looks great. There's another six foot enclosure on the floor behind me that you can't see. So now you can sort of see how this room is going to look. We're going to have the two six foots behind me. This is sort of where I'll be sitting when I record the podcast. Actually, in reality, it'll be about six feet forward but you'll be able to see one stack to my right and then there's a 90 degree angle jutting out this way and the second stack will be there with a six foot on the bottom and a four foot and a two foot on top. So I am very much looking forward to the way that's going, that's going to turn out. I think it's gonna be awesome. Uh, the only other things I had to do was add the plexiglass, the finger poles and the locks on the doors. So that's what I have there. Now I'm just doing some testing as far as heating and lighting goes and I'm gonna be moving the animals in there shortly on a sort of temporary basis. The enclosures went together fantastically. They were really relatively easy to build. It only, I think by the, the third one, I think it only took me maybe 40 minutes to put it all together. So it was quite easy. Quality is great. The two things that I would say that were the most challenging, one was putting those seals in, those rubber gaskets with that sort of spline, that thing that you'd use to insert spline into a screen. I don't know what you call that, that rolly tool. That was very tedious and tiresome. I was very happy by the third enclosure to be done that. And just to be safe, I went around with silicone, as you guys saw, and, and sealed the seams even more. Everything seems very fortified and, and, and sealed, which I'm happy with. But those seals, putting those seals in was definitely a challenge. And the second thing is, was because of the way the nature of how these enclosures are put together, you're using a mallet to hammer in square tubing onto these posts, it creates some noise. So it's not something that you can do really quietly. Like if you're, if you're trying to do it uh, at two in the morning or something and you don't wanna wake up your family, that's not gonna happen. If you live in a house, it doesn't matter. You can probably do it whenever you want as long as it's at a reasonable hour if you share your house with people. But if you live in a shared complex like an apartment or a townhouse or something, you're probably gonna wanna tell your neighbors or at least do it at a reasonable time. Like I said, it's, it does create quite a lot of noise banging those, those things together. It's short-lived, but it's not something that you're gonna be able to do quietly like setting up an exoterra that you know, might come fully formed. Um, the flat packed enclosures need to be assembled and because of that, it creates noise. It's not a big deal, but I thought I would say that to anybody who, you know, if you are a little bit worried about noise, you may want to tell your neighbors or your housemates. Well, I think that's it for this video. I'm super excited for how this is turning out. I cannot wait for this project to be done and have these amazing enclosures beside me and behind me while I'm recording the podcast. So a huge thanks to Custom Reptile Habitats for supplying these enclosures and sponsoring the podcast and supporting me through all of this. I, I do really appreciate it. If you are looking to pick up a new reptile enclosure, head to... Okay, I need to pause it just for a quick second. This is editing Dylan speaking now. I actually make a mistake on the URL I'm about to say, so I need to correct that. So if you are looking for the affiliate link for Custom Reptile Habitats, head to animalsathome.ca slash crh. That is the affiliate link. And something else I forgot to say is if you are wanting to watch how this series develops, if you're wanting to watch how the next enclosures get built, as well as how I fully build out the enclosures specifically for each animal, then make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a future update. If you use that URL, it will take you to the Custom Reptile Habitats website, but that is an affiliate link. So if you do make a purchase, a small commission will come back to me at no extra cost to you, which of course helps support the podcast, helps me pay for the editing fees and whatnot. And we can continue to grow this channel to continue to push herpetoculture forward, which I'm super excited and passionate about, and I hope you are as well. So again, thank you Custom Reptile Habitats for believing in me and supplying me with these enclosures. And thank you, the viewer and the listeners of the podcast and the viewers of this video for sticking around and watching the project. And I hope you have a chance to check out the podcast if you haven't already. And I think that is it. I will see you guys in the next video.